Now check this out. I've got a Chrome DevTools open up here. It's just the JavaScript console. If I run the method mat.random, it gives me a random number. But if I head over to my command line and run this Python script on the side, it gives me back a list of numbers. Now, let's run the mat.random again. And if you look closely, it's the same number. If I run it again, bam, it's the same one. I run it again, bam, same one. I run it again, bam. Okay, you get the idea. I can predict random numbers. Pretty cool, right? Well, in this video, we'll explore randomness in computers and even break the randomness in JavaScript's native mat.random method and show you how to predict the future. That's right, eyes and ears wide open, boys. This video is sponsored by Sneak. Sneak scans your projects for known vulnerabilities in code, dependencies, containers, and also config files. Go try it out at sneak.co slash potent function. As far as I know, there's only two ways to predict random numbers. The first one, which is the easier one, is to run the function and go back in time so you would know the next number. Or the second way is that we can use some basic math and programming to predict the number beforehand. Well, I think the first option is a lot easier. So just to make things harder for myself, I'll do the second option, but I'll leave the first one for you guys to try it out as an exercise. All right, so let's get started with randomness. So the obvious question is, what is random? I'm gonna pull up Wikipedia for this one. In common usage, Randomness is the apparent or lack of a pattern or predictability in events. Makes sense, right? So basically, there's no way to predict the outcome beforehand. Like, for example, a coin toss. A coin toss is an example of what's called a chaotic system. So in our example of a coin flip, the outcome of the coin depends on a lot of factors, like the force that you initially put, or the drift in the wind, or the air resistance, stuff like that, right? But if you knew all the factors that affect the coin toss, and have accurate values for each one of them, you could predict with high probability what side the coin's gonna show up. Basically, if you knew all the initial conditions of a chaotic system, you can model the outcome because it's deterministic. This means that randomness is basically our ignorance to the initial conditions of a chaotic system. We know that computers generate random numbers. It's used all over the place. But these aren't truly random. Think about this. Computers are deterministic machines. So you program it in a certain way and you expect the results to be precisely what you think it should be. There's no way to generate a random number with a traditional computer when the entire system is deterministic. So here's what humans came up with. We create an algorithm that takes in some initial value and then uses it to generate the next number in the sequence and then takes the generated number to produce the next number and so on. So it's like a self-feeding algorithm. The initial conditions are called a seed. It's basically some initial value like a time on a PC or a temperature from surroundings or static noise levels, stuff like that. The sequence of numbers it generates over time has some kind of a repeatability factor. Like after a while, you'll get the same set of numbers. And this thing is called as a period. So the greater the period, the better the algorithm. These random number generator algorithms are called as pseudo random number generators. It's pseudo because it's not true randomness as you saw. There's this website, random.org, which gives you an API to generate a random number based on atmospheric noise. So for our puny human brains, it's kind of a true random number generator because we wouldn't know what the values for the noise levels are. Anyways, pseudo random number generators are used in games like, you know, spawning a character in a random place or generating different worlds, stuff like that. What these aren't used for is cryptography because pseudo random number generators under conditions are predictable and predictability isn't appreciated in the field of cryptography. Anyways, now that you understand some of the basics of randomness, let's get to the real meat of this video. 
So before we predict the random numbers, let's try to understand what we're trying to predict. So in JavaScript, there's this function called math.random, which is a native function, and it comes with almost all JavaScript engines. The engine Node.js and Chrome browser uses is called the V8. Uh, you can learn more about it on v8.dev. Anyways, V8 is maintained by Google. It's open source. We can check out its source code on GitHub if we want. So, you know what, let's do that. Uh, let's jump into the implementation of math.random. Also, if we do a quick little Google search on what algorithm the V8 is using to generate these random numbers, it turns out it's something called XOR Shift 128. And this is what it looks like. So it's just a bunch of XORs and shift operations. So basically there are these two states, state zero and state one. State zero becomes state one and state one becomes the value after all the XORing and shifting going on. The initial values, however, for these states are set uh, from a system time, I believe. And then there's these different shift constants. You can learn why these specific values are chosen for shift constants from this paper. I'll leave some links on my GitHub repository. Check them out. But the thing is, we don't really need to understand the whole algorithm to break it because we have a superpower on our side. It's called Z3. Well, Z3 is an SMT solver. SMT stands for Satisfiability Modulo Theorem or Theory. Well, it means that if you lay out a problem as an equation and then specify constraints, it's going to solve the whole thing for you automatically or automagically. I don't want to get into SATs and SMT solvers because it's a big topic on its own. And also, I know nothing about the internals whatsoever. But I kind of learned the whole thing just by playing around with it. So you can check out a few exercises on my GitHub repository. Again, links are in the description. But our goal here is to find the state values. So once we have the right state values, we can get the random number out of it. Simple. Anyways, so Z3 is very easy to use. Basically, we define the unknowns as placeholder values and then provide the solver some constraints. And the solver is going to spit out a model which will have the values. It's that simple. For example, if I want to solve the value for X and Y in this equation, I can literally just give Z3 these constraints and bam, you have the values. Simple as that. Well, I can do a lot more like, you know, do some logical reasoning or calculate how much money I should spend to meet certain needs or uh, crack like a weak hash or even solve like a Sudoku. You can find the code for all of these exercises on my GitHub repository. But man, Z3 is pretty freaking cool. Anyways, let's get into the randomness prediction part. Like I mentioned, to solve the random states, we need to create the unknown variables, which we will be creating 64-bit placeholder values using Z3 bit vectors. So since XOR shift has, or the XOR shift 128 has two state values, we create those two states as placeholder variables. Now we basically have to emulate the exact same thing that's happening in V8 codebase into our little Python Z3 solver. But before we move on, we should first need a bunch of random values generated from the V8 so that we can use it in our you know, solver for generating those unknown states. Uh, so we'll, let's go ahead and generate a few numbers like so. You can try this in Node.js or Chrome browser or even D8, which is like a shell for V8. Now we can loop over each one of these numbers and add constraints in our solver. And also we can just copy paste the XOR shift algorithm. We just replace states with our placeholder values and use logical shifts instead of arithmetic shifts. So now in V8, the state zero becomes the random number. So the state zero is going to be like a large number, but it's transformed into a decimal value that's between zero and one. Now, I think the reason why they're doing this is to minimize the artifacts. I think I read it somewhere, but I'm not sure. Uh, but the way that the big number is turned into this decimal value is actually pretty interesting. It's, it's basically spitting out something called as a mantissa. In computers, 
floating point numbers are represented in bits according to a standard called IEEE 754. This is what it looks like. So you've got a 64 bit number in which the first bit is going to be the sign and the next 11 bits are going to be the exponent and the rest 52 bits are going to be called as mantissa. So that's that's the interesting bit. Then the values are actually used like two to the power exponent times mantissa and that's going to give you the real floating point number we're looking for. Now we can take our state zero and pack it as double with the help of a module called struct in Python. And then we can unpack it as a 64 bit unsigned integer, which is also known as long long. We have finally get the lower 52 bits, which is the mantissa and we subtract one. Now we just add the constraint to compare the mantises. So once we have our state zero value, we can get the double representation, uh, which will give us the decimal value, which is basically our random number. So in V8, uh, there's this function called to double that takes care of this whole conversion part. So we can just simply port uh, that function to Python to get our random number uh, out of it. So there you have it a random number predictor. And that wasn't so hard, was it? Exactly. Anyways, <laughs> uh, so let's just try it out. Let's generate a few random numbers like so. And then we take that and feed it as a sequence in our code and run the script. Bam, we've got the prediction boy. Uh, so let's just confirm that it works. Mat.random and it works pretty cool. Anyways, the code is available on GitHub if you want to try it out. Anyways, now that you can predict the Matdel random function, so what? Well, sometimes people create libraries, especially cryptographic libraries, and they seem to use Matdel random in them. And that's kind of not a good idea, you know what I'm saying? A random number loses its meaning if it's predictable, right? So hence, you know, we cannot use pseudo random number generators. So what we have to do is use something called as a cryptographically secure pseudo random number generators. That's a topic for another video, but use them, but not math.random, for example. So if your project uses one of these many cryptographically insecure libraries, and you won't know it unless you review the code. And that's an impossible task because when it comes to node modules, it's, it's, it's a freaking black hole, right? We all know that joke, but it's true. One module depends on another and that depends on another. It goes on. A great solution to find all these insecure vulnerabilities is to use something like Sneak to test all the vulnerabilities in your project. Um, I can run the CLI tool that checks for the insecure vulnerabilities in my project. Here's an example of a library with insecure randomness uh, and it's using math.random as part of its cryptography. Yikes. Anyways, give it a shot. It's free. I personally use it in my important projects. It's great. I like it. Anyways, hope you all learned something new. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks y'all for watching. Here's a random fact and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.